Nerd Academy podcast is released weekly at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, available on our website at www.thenerdacademypodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the Nerd Academy podcast, where every donation allows us to bring you more exciting content every week. Good morning, class, and welcome back to the Nerd Academy podcast, your source for nerd news and commentary. I'm your host and superior web headmaster, Jared Bachman Stubbs, and joining me, as always, is your resident Green Lantern professor, Travis Grossman. Was that faster than normal? The intro? The drums sounded weird, didn't they? Yes. It was sounded like someone had like a had like an attack of some sort. They went boop 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 boop. Hold on, I'm gonna just run it real quick. That was normal. That's weird. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I'm sitting here all perplexed. I was like, what? Whew. I was like, what? What's going on? Did he crank it to one and a half times speed? Ah. I, was, I was very confused, too. I'm trying to... Hold on. We're two out of three. Two out of three were normal. And then there was always like... Duh, 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 anyway... Uh yeah, welcome back. We have kind of a light show for you guys this week. Obviously, we got our first uh first round of Hawkeye talk. Um Travis Wait, is playing Guardian. Show? Yeah, Hawkeye talk. There's a I've never heard of Hawkeye in my life. What's going on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's doing a bit. Okay, I got very confused. I thought you for a second you thought I said the Hawkeye movie. And that's why you tried to specify show. No, I just I, uh... I just missed your joke is all. Yeah, I'll explain when we get to it, but I didn't realize how not excited for this show. I'm not to diss on it. Like, I haven't watched it yet, but it didn't occur to me how little I was like caring about this show until like yesterday. <laughs> eh, it's okay. It happens. Uh, shit's been sneaking up on me. Um but uh yeah we're gonna be i'm gonna be doing some hawkeye talk travis hasn't seen the first two episodes yet um and we got some news for you guys before that a little bit of housekeeping a little bit of uh pluggables that need to happen up top this coming thursday december the 2nd 9 p.m eastern time 8 p.m Western and 5 p.m., I guess, West Coast. Spencer and I will be on Bomb Bad Cast. And thank you. And huge, huge, first of all, shout out and thank you to Eli from Star Wars in a Galaxy podcast, uh, who has become the question writer for this endeavor. We are basically doing. A, uh, our own little not the schmodown Star Wars schmodown on Thursday, a uh, little gentleman's wager. So be sure to tune into that and watch Spencer and I uh, hand out some pimp slaps to some Gungan loving dipshits. It's going to be a wonderful time. And I thought you and I... Scotty were actually having a fight yesterday. <laughs> Like, I had to backtrack a bunch, so it went from, <laughs> like, I, I, I found it, because it, it just seemed really, like, hurtful from both of you. <laughs> <laughs> we both committed to the, and the funny thing is, like, a- after every tweet had been, ev- after every tweet sent, there was an immediate, I love you, I consider you a close friend and colleague, I'm, like, a text message that followed, like, a shitty kayfabe tweet. <laughs> It, it kind of did a like 
a uh, bell curve kind of thing where if I went to, back to the beginning, I was like, oh, they're taking shots because of this trivia thing. And then when I, but where I'd come in at was just like, you would both seemingly drop any kayfabe because you weren't talking about trivia anymore. And then it, <laughs> then it like bell curved back down into re- like um, memes that were made 30 seconds ago. <laughs> everything was fine again and I was like okay this is totally a bit they're fine yeah no there there isn't any actual real fissure between uh camp teen up and camp bomb bad um I just I remember I had a conversation with Scott where I was like so we're really gonna go for each other's throats right and he's like oh absolutely and I was like okay before I say anything mean I love you I love you too okay cool let's go <laughs> Uh, I, I, he, okay. I'll admit it right now. He got me good with the hashtag Jared, the hack Jedi thing. He got me, he got me good. I saw that. I laughed and I texted him. I was like, that was, that was clever. You, 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 you pushed me into a corner on that one. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you that ground, but yeah, tune in Thursday night, little gentleman's bet. Assuming everything goes according to plan. Uh, Eli and Pete will, uh, from Pete from Around the Galaxy will be emceeing the match. They will be our Harloff and Ellis. Uh, so yeah, and we'll, we'll we'll explain the uh the stakes of our respective bets when we get closer when, uh, during the actual stream, and then that will end up being this week's episode of Knights of the Nerd Republic. So. If you can't catch the stream live Sunday, it'll be re-uploaded to this channel. So, yeah. And then also, like, it, it's all it's all over uh, my Twitter. Jerry Scotty's Pete from Around the Galaxy made a really cool graphic uh, for it. Um, it's actually my Twitter header right now. Uh, it looks cool as hell. I I was gonna make the graphic. And then I was having issues like getting the lightsaber effect. And Pete was like, hey, if you need help with anything with this, like, let me know. And I was like, hey, this lightsaber thing, like making the lightsabers look good is proving more difficult than I was anticipating. Could you just do the lightsabers and I'll do the rest? And then Pete being Pete and the incredible graphic design guy that he is. Did the lightsabers. And then the rest of it. Um, but yeah, so huge thanks to Pete and Eli for helping set the stage. Uh, and I look forward to curb stomping Jerry and mostly Scotty, uh, on Thursday. First time Spencer and I ever get to team up. I'm very excited about it, but, uh, yeah, this show. Oh, before we actually jump into our show, other last piece of housekeeping. Travis, yes. I'm going to let you do the ad. Oh, my God. What was my bit? Oh, God. <laughs> I had something really funny. I think it was about the Bloody Mary, uh, like, saying it three times. Oh, it was like Sunday's Bloody Mary mix for all your uh, demon in a mirror needs. <laughs> Normally, I make my own demons, but you know, Sunday's uh, uh, Caesar spicy Bloody Mary demon in in a jar for your mirror really does the job for me. And I think she'll do the job for you too. I think that was the bit. <laughs> Even though it's not a fully formed joke, just like the proof of concept of it really got me. So I like it. Like, I'll let you do the end. And I'm like, I mean, I'll do it. I I can't do it as well as you because I have, I, you know, I'm not a Bloody Mary guy. But like, and you're like, do the bit. I was like, oh, I had a bit. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I remember having a bit. Uh, Go drink a Bloody Mary. Yeah. I mix it good. <laughs> Sunday, like Bloody him. Mary. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. Whatever Travis and I uh, 
hang out at some point next week to watch the Schmodown Spectacular. I'm making him have a Sunday's Bloody Mary. Um, I, I, I correction. I will have him have some of mine because most people can't like do Bloody Marys at dinner, understandably, because it's kind of a hearty drink. Um, I'm weird and I shouldn't just drink Bloody Marys with dinner, but I do. Uh, but yeah, they got the spe- uh, sp- <laughs> spicy Caesar mix, which is my favorite. Spezer. They got a Spezer. They got that Spezer mix. That's they right. got that Spezer mix. Uh, the mild Bloody Mary mix, rim salt, a subscription box uh, for people who really like the stuff as I do. Vegan Bloody Mary mix. They got some pickled garnishes. They got okra, dilly beans, and asparagus uh, shot glasses. Rim salt, everything you need. For either your Bloody Mary drinking or Bloody Mary demon summoning purposes. So go to sundaysbloodymary.com slash shop. Use code TNAP at checkout. Get 10% off your order and help out your favorite nerds. So. Cool little fun bit of news. Now, in the lead up with all the press going on with Spider-Man No Way Home... I am personally, and I know a lot of other people have been as well, been a little antsy because uh, Mr. Tom Holland has been very cagey about his future as Spider-Man. Um, a lot of people, myself partially included, thought that he was kind of posturing, clearly trying to uh, get a little bit more cheddar from Papa Sony uh, on the matter. But uh, it seems from... Sony Pictures head Amy Pascal. We are not done with Tom Holland's time as the web head by any means, and that another trilogy of MCU movies is in the works now. This is from uh, Aaron Couch, Hollywood Reporter. Tom Holland's Spider Man is staying put in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, according to producer Amy Pascal. Sony and Marvel Studios are weeks away from unveiling Spider Man No Way Home, the latest co production between the two studios. Pascal says there are more plans for Holland, Sony, and the Kevin Feige-run Marvel to collaborate. Quote, This is not the last movie we're going to make with Marvel. This is not the last Spider-Man movie, Pascal said in an interview with Fandango, published Monday. We're getting ready to make the next Spider-Man movie with Tom and Marvel. We're thinking of this as three films, and now we're going on to the next three. This is not the last of our MCU movies. Sony Insiders note the studio has a strong relationship with Holland and Feige and hopes to continue their collaboration. There are no official plans for the trilogy at this phase. So, yeah, uh, Amy Pascal also teased that we will be getting information about the Into the Spider-Verse sequel, quote, very soon. Which I like to hear. Uh, So, uh, Travis, thoughts on the matter? This is good. There was, I agree. There, you, like you kind of said, there were some light fears that, like, at the end of No Way Home, uh, Tom Holland and Peter Parker would end up getting bounced through another wormhole into the Sony verse. Yeah. Which is the darkest outcome that movie could have had. And so, I am inclined to agree with you. Uh, hearing that that is not the case makes me quite happy. Um, Me too. I think that, especially knowing that, you know, we have no idea how No Way Home will end. And assuming, you know, what's being said here is accurate, uh, that, you know, Amy Pascal means what she says. We're looking at a situation where we're going to continue and we don't know what the status quo is going to be for Peter. You know, we could be moving into another phase of the MCU where he's reset. You know, we're back to nobody knows who Spider-Man is, not his friends, not his aunt. <clears throat> he is without the aid of Tony Stark or his legacy and what he's left behind for him. Like, we kind of could be going back to, to square one with Spider-Man, not necessarily in terms of character, but in terms of like what the status quo is for him as the hero going into a second trilogy probably set uh, during his college years, Um, which I think is interesting. And I'm I'm very curious to see what we get next. 
you know, the, my biggest fear with No Way Home is this feels like such a finale, like such a stinger that, you know, it's a great place to kind of like, okay, we're done now. And I'd hate for that to be the case. I'd hate for Peter to not be all over the MCU as he is currently. So very exciting stuff there. Uh, before we move on, while we're still on the topic of Spider-Man, since you weren't here last week to talk about it, Travis, thoughts on the new trailer? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I thought it was very reserved in a good way. Right? Like, considering Sony's history with Spider-Man trailers. Mm-hmm. Like, we got a better idea of the plot. Um, I was surprised. And, you know, we didn't say what the leaks were from two weeks ago, so I'm not going to say what they are now. But I'm surprised yeah. we didn't see at least one of them in this trailer. Uh, although we kind of got confirmation, I'm sure you guys talked about it or you saw it. The um, lizard, yeah, the Brazilian trailer, yeah, where it, yeah. So, <laughs> so that funny. was just like explaining that to people is one of my favorite things because they're like, oh. You- like, how, what do you mean there was proof they were in it? They're not in the trailer. And I'm like, well, no, but if you see this scene where clearly there's supposed to be other people in these spots, and then you look at Lizard here and he goes. <laughs> at first I was going to be like, well, clearly you see that scaffolding falling. And I'm like, he's going in the other direction. Yep. So, yeah. It, uh... It's funny. Last week, uh, Trey was on talking about the trailer mm-hmm. with me because uh, he uh, anybody who watched last week knows, you know, he went out to L.A. for the whole event and everything uh, kind of brushed past Tom Holland during it. Um, <laughs> and just that that whole fan environment and, you know, talking about everything going on there. Um the the marketing for this movie has been hilarious and so very much a product of its time. Uh, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm surprised the trailer was as reserved as it was. Like you said, you know, I didn't give away too much. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for the days. The next time we get a movie like this, where they do the absolute opposite of what's happening right now. Where every time there's a new anything, Sony sh- tries to shut it up, and that just makes it worse. Yeah. Where Sony just confirms anything they see on Twitter, but not by showing yeah. it, by just saying, "Yep, that's true." To every, but to everything, even stuff that's clearly false. Batman will feature in. Exactly. The tarantula will put a bomb on Gwen Stacy in. <laughs> I told that story at work the other day, and people didn't believe me. I had to explain that, like, the tarantula is real, and I didn't know he existed before that encounter. There, 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 there are two types of people. There is the guy who believes that the tarantula killed Gwen Stacy and believes it so hard that they convince themselves that it's true. And then there's people like me who don't believe that Paul McCartney is dead, but will gaslight people into thinking that I think it's true. (laughs) Let me tell you, this new Beatles documentary, I've been having a great time talking to people. I have had such a lovely time just offhandedly. Oh, yeah. And then, like, when Paul McCartney died in the late 60s, I'm like, what? Time to plane crash. Paul is dead. Turn me on, dead man. It's a wonderful time. Uh, other last bit of news before we move into some uh, Hawkeye talk and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy talk. Uh, just uh, quick cut and dry. And Man Quantumania has wrapped production. So uh, I, moving on I to post production, shooting. yeah. Since August, I forgot too, and I had a moment where I was like, "Wow, that felt like a really quick shoot," but like it's it's 
it's been a good minute, you know. It's ba- basically four months of shooting. That checks out. So, yeah. Quantumania is moving into post, uh, which means we will probably start seeing some stuff for it very, very, not very soon, but in the foreseeable future. Moving into 2022 here. Travis, how's Guardians been? You know, I got to tell you. Uh, I wasn't excited at all for this game. I wasn't going to pick it up because it's Square Enix and I thought I was going to play like Avengers. And I was, you know, the, I, we've said it all before. I've said it all before. Oh, oh, another quick thing Spider Man's been added to Avengers and it looks awful. Oh, yeah, it looks like <laughs> trash. It looks absolutely like I, I, it makes me laugh so hard. The thing you said <laughs> like, me about why does he look like a woman doing Pilates in the 90s <laughs> was, uh, had me on the floor. Like I was laughing so hard. It's just that, like, like literally, the weird, like, because, like, because it, it's this, like, over the shoulder shot of him, like, doing the webs, but he's like, kind of hunched over doing this shit. For those of you watching the video version, it's it, it's he. Like, it looks terrible. Actively popping his butt out. Like, what was that? No I didn't have my headphones on. Uh, he, he's actively popping his butt out. There's no reason for him to be doing that. Yeah. And like some of the suits are scaling from like, oh, that looks really good to why? <laughs> why? Wow. Why would you do this? It just but, looks so uh, bad. As um, you were saying, with a good game. So yeah, wasn't excited. When the game came out and I saw specifically Armin, because like, yeah, I saw chatter about it, but no one was like, it didn't do well. I mean, it did fine on sales, probably. I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, I, I just didn't care about this game. And then Armin was talking about it on Facebook and was like, this game rules. This is so cool. Oh, my God. It's like Arkham Asylum, but for the Guardians, I'm having a blast. The gameplay is fun. I'm like, maybe I'll have to maybe I'll have to pick it up. Maybe, like, maybe if it goes on sale. And uh, this Black Friday rolled around, and I was in my uh, local Walmart trying not to blow my brains out because I was there not on the clock. Oh, and I walked by. It was by choice. We were, it was you know it was Black Friday, and you're like, oh, let's let's just go see what they got. Let's see, let's see what some of the sales look like. And I didn't realize we had Guardians on sale for twenty five dollars. Holy shit! So I got like the I got the PS5 version for twenty five dollars, which is a steal. So grab that. Didn't play it for two days and uh, popped it in for the first time last night. I even considered I was like maybe I'll try streaming again. I'll stream experiencing. Wake up, Jared. I'll stream. I'll stream the uh, experience of this game. Like my first experience with this game, and like it'll be a fun time. And then I thought about it some more, and I'm like, I'd have to do it without the licensed music. Yeah, because there's just so much, um, and that just isn't the correct Guardians experience. So uh, I didn't do it. But like in the rather in the than acknowledge the fact that the DC uh, DMCA laws and rules are ass backwards and stupid we're gonna make a version of the game that doesn't have yeah you know. there's a switch like in in the audio options you can turn off any licensed music yeah i and saw that just, which again it's it's asinine but like in the main menu i listened before even clicking start i listened to hit me with your best shot and um take on me in their entirety and then hit new game <laughs> Uh, and I, I've only played like the opening couple missions. This game is so cool. Like the combat feels good. Uh, you get to like give commands to the other guardians in combat. And I do a great job of explaining to you how that works. And it's pretty fluid. Um, it's, it's arc. I thought maybe it's Arkham, but for the guardians, was like was the combat and that was gonna feel weird. It's not. It's like all the lore 
you can find in all of the like pre-references in the thing and it's very much comics guardians which means i have no idea what's going on um but it's it's great it's really cool uh if you have not played this game on my disc recommendation i rescind that go play it it's really nice it's on the list because I, I i maybe have a plug for a ps5 and Good once luck. I'm finished with Christmas shopping, uh, I might. My plan is to splurge on myself. Hopefully, acquire the console for myself before the holidays, and then let it be games, so I can do something with this giant block I own now. Um, again, tentative <laughs> plan and strategy. Guardians is on the list of games that I don't want to touch until I have my P- have a PS5. Yeah, like I'm saving. I'm, I I don't want to get it for my Xbox. I want I want to play it on my play on a my future, as I've been calling it, Schrodinger's PlayStation. Um, that's a good way to look at them. Uh, <laughs> especially if you're in an online like a like a Walmart sale, like the way I got mine, where it's like they're there. They say they're there, but I know they're not there because it's not letting me through. Um, yeah, it's the game's beautiful. It runs at a nice crispy 60 frames per second. Everything's nice and smooth. I'm excited. I'm excited. I've been hearing amazing things and yeah, hell yeah. Very exciting stuff. Well, as you got to explain an experience, uh, to me that I've not yet had, uh, oh, wait, but there's also, but there's uh, also. Pokemon came out. Pokemon, yes, 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 yes. Week and a half ago. Uh, I've already done a playthrough. I'm halfway through my second playthrough. Um, They are remakes of Diamond and Pearl that are good and playable. And that's pretty cool. And I am very happy. Um, I didn't realize how much of Diamond and Pearl I didn't remember. (laughs) Because of all of the minor switches that they made in Platinum, that as I'm playing through the game, I'm like, they didn't have this Pokemon, or they definitely had this Pokemon, or I definitely found this item here before. Why'd they? And then remembering, wait a minute. That was the other one. This is Diamond and Pearl, where everything was slow, and I didn't remember anything because I was dying of old age at like 10 years old. <laughs> Diamond and Pearl remakes are great. If you have a Switch, pick it up. I think, you know, if you're a Pokemon fan, you'll enjoy it. There's glitches galore in the game, too. I haven't looked into a bunch of them, but you can, you know, copy items, copy Pokemon. Uh, I skipped an entire gym last night, which was cool. That's fun. Because some of the puzzles are based on uh, the old four-way grid system. Right, because you can only walk okay. up, down, left, right. Uh, you're not locked into a grid anymore because of the analog stick, but it will try to like reconnect you to a grid if you get off of a grid, like because it's like almost grid spaces. So if you're trying to move in any direction, it will correct you to a grid if you're moving too diagonally and you need to be going straight, and so. There's a the ice gym puzzle where you're using momentum to slide around and take out obstacles. If you just go straight up to where the gym leader is, you can make it like tag you onto the stairs to get to her without doing any of the puzzle. Nice. That's fun. I uh this past week I finished my like winter time replay of Fallen Order. And uh, for the first time successfully, I think, took advantage of the weird glitch where you can make Cal fly. Where it's just like, it it requires precision. And I see people on YouTube do it a lot. But I finally got the, like, the timing down where you got to, like, double jump and use force pull at the same time. And, like, both of the animations basically make them kind of start floating uh, while Mm. you do it. I also uh, double jumped 
And uh, the game, I guess, threw me into the planet core of Bogano, um, which I was like, oh, OK. And it, like I took that little health penalty for falling off a ledge. And then it respawned me falling and then took my entire health bar um, and made me respawn. But I couldn't get any of it back because it was like. In my the, XP yeah. was inside of the floor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the gaming I've done was I decided to replay Fallen Order. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to play new shit until I'm able to get my hands on a PlayStation. So I'm just kind of sitting on my hands until then. But uh, definitely going to be picking up Diamond and Pearl. You know, I'm leaving that open in case that ends up being a Christmas present. Uh, so I'm gonna like gonna see if that happens. I'm gonna touch anything, but definitely gonna be getting Guardians uh, once I finally have a PS5. Uh, all interesting is that. My boy is in Diamond and Pearl, right? Uh, yes, it's from Diamond Good. and Pearl. That's what I thought. I thought that was like I thought that was his generation when he came into play, but I wanted to double check. Uh, Hawkeye episode one. So first two episodes are streaming. They both went up at the same time. Uh, Hawkeye is going to be six episodes, but as of Tonight slash I still tomorrow. don't believe you that there's a Hawkeye show. I won't believe it till I actually watch it. Because <laughs> they did the like the, the final push of Hawkeye's coming out, and I went, Hawkeye's coming out already? What the hell? Yeah. And then I, I didn't even realize it was out. It was out before Thanksgiving, right? Like I'm not crazy. Thanksgiving Eve. Okay. So that entire week I was like, Yeah, it's coming out soon. It's coming out soon. Thanksgiving came and went, and I was like, Hawkeyes, there's still a lot of stuff coming around. And then you texted me last night. I was like, have you seen Hawkeye yet? And I was like, what? It's valid. I mean, you know, it's Hawkeye. I think, here's the thing. I think a lot of people are going to miss out on what might be a gem for the MCU because you're going to go, it's Hawkeye. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be bad. I, you know, no point have I been like, ah, this is going to be trash. I'm not excited. Like, it, it's not the Guardians feeling I had, where I looked at Guardians and was like, ah, Square Enix is making it. Oh, it's going to be Avengers. It's going to be bad. And I'm going to, you know, bah. it was just like, oh, yeah, Hawkeye show. And that was like, it was that perfect medium where I could not actually get excited about it. Not yeah. that I didn't want to, but just because, like, hey, yeah, it's, it's Hawkeye. It's Hawkeye. It'll it'll come. We'll all watch it. Um, episode one was a little slow. There is, th there's a lot here. Like, there is, there is some really gooey, crunchy, yummy goodness here. Um, and it feels, I, I, I saw somebody make this comparison, and it made me very excited. And now I see exactly what they meant. There is something about this show. And it's weird because you can't binge this like the Netflix stuff, but it feels Marvel Netflixian. And maybe because it's street level and it involves organized crime that like it, you get that vibe. Mm -hmm. But it feels like a version of the Marvel Netflix stuff that's a little bit more consistent with the tone of mainline MCU. Mm -hmm. Clint's characterization is really interesting already. You know, it feels like it feels like his like iconic speech in Age of Ultron. You know, where he has his big, you know, the city's floating, you're a witch, there's robots, I have a bow and arrow, none of this makes any sense. We're like you're seeing the aftermath of a man who has lived this batshit crazy life finally get to retire, you know, and like all of the well-earned time after everything get interrupted. And the Christmas backdrop is 
absolutely used to a brilliant, brilliant level. Um, I don't think it was just an attempt to like have holiday branding at all. Like there was a very clear, this is Clint's first Christmas with his family in a very long time. And he might miss it again. And that's genius. Uh, setting this up against Christmas. Um, as everybody's read at this point, Haley Steinfeld is great as Kate Bishop. Uh, she, she's an absolute treat. Naturally, I didn't seek it out. I saw it on Twitter. Um, there's this hilarious clip of the fandom of like, it's the Friday night tights guys, you know, Alex Jones new buddies. Um, talking about how like, Oh, Kate Bishop, they, they just show him, the, they, just, they skip over her training and now she's super competent and can do whatever the hell. She spends the entire first two episodes just falling on her face and being made a fool of. And it's like the, the very implication that woman does. Well, for fight. them, that is being competent at something. So, you know. Ah! Oh, shit. Death to all of them. Oh, Jesus. It's it's her face every time. It's the it's the surprise at what she just said <laughs> from herself that gets me every time. Um, that was funny. Uh, so I mean, I'm not surprised at the same people who have just made their entire very predictable career hating a show like this that they don't like it. Um, I'm not gonna feign surprise on that at all. And quite frankly, I don't feel like uh, um, dignifying it beyond what we've already said. A bunch of angry, pissed babies. But I'm really impressed so far. I don't want to make the same... I don't want to say necessarily the same mistake. I don't want to do the thing that we've done for a lot of Marvel. Not, not we specifically, but like the fandom has done, where we have built almost all of the Marvel Netflix shows around when X character might show up. However, you can kind of already get the vibe that you can see if it's true, exactly where Wilson Fisk would fit into all of this. Mm -hmm. If those rumors are true, but, uh, yeah, the action's been fun. Clint, this is the mo this is the best Clint has been written and portrayed uh thus far in the MCU period, and we're only two episodes in. Uh I love the tracksuit mafia. They lean like again, like they kept the name and they kept the fact that every other word is bro. This is shit you couldn't have done in 2012, and I love it. Uh I will say in terms of criticism, I will absolutely jump on the, I don't want to say bandwagon, but the uh, the uh, general consensus that I think is absolutely warranted that uh, while it's good that Matt Fraction is getting acknowledgement uh, for his role in the Hawkeye run that this show is very clearly largely based on and has already borrowed several elements from, uh, I believe if uh, you will give me one moment to fact check the author. I know Aha is his uh, last name. Wanted to the entire band, David. Aha. David Aha. Uh, Dave Aha doesn't get a credit the way Fraction does, which, again, I, I get it. Like, one of these people wrote the story. Uh, the entire aesthetic of the show is also borrowing from the Matt Fraction run. And even though we all call it the Fraction run because he's the writer, Dave Aha's art style is all over it. Uh, the show that is obviously it's all over the comic book, <laughs> but uh, the very like everything is arrows, everything is 
targets, um, the shades of purple. It's very David Aha, and the fact that he doesn't have a credit on here where Matt Fraction does feels kind of jive. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> the pay them both. Don't just give them credits. Pay them both because they wrote this story uh, that you're mostly adapting. So that's kind of my biggest criticism there. I'm very curious to see where we're going moving forward. I'm very excited to see Marvel have a street lo- uh, street level in the MCU finally. You mm. know, everything has always been really big and international and interplanetary. So the fact that we're finally on the street level makes me really happy. I'm very excited to see where things go. Um, and that's that's what having these shows is great because you don't want to make a street level thing for a movie, right? You can include it as your first act of a movie. We've kind of seen that where they're dealing like Spider-Man dealing with a bank robbery. Um, and then that kind of cascades him into, you know, the vulture or whatever. But it just not that it would be unexciting for us, but you can, you know, in a pitch room, if someone came in for a feature length Marvel movie and was like, okay, for this entire movie, Hawkeye's going to be fighting a mafia. No one would. Uh, They'd never written like that. uh, I love that though. (laughs) I I would see that movie. We do, but there, you know, it's that risk reward where it's like, Oh, Spider-Man handling like random crooks. Spider-Man fighting the sinister six. I think you could absolutely. Especially if you incorporate like the mob based villains, I think it requires the right hero. I think you could absolutely kind of like the uh, the gang war subplot in both the mainline Spider Man PS4 game and then the DLC. You could absolutely sell that movie. I, I I don't think it would be a tough sell, especially like especially now that we're going to have allegedly, presumably. At least six movies with the same Spider Man. There's room there to do a very street level oriented. Peter is stuck. Peter is trying to defuse a gang war that it happens to involve villains like the Kingpin and Hammerhead and Tombstone and, you know people who could get roped into the gang war to act as fo- as like foot soldiers like your scorpions and shocker like you could absolutely build you could probably build a trilogy around that and like each movie could kind of like focus on like each side of that war you could very easily rope in your daredevils iron fists and luke cages for like support heroes like you could, i i think there's absolutely a way to do it but my thing, the MCU can, has made its brand so shut up so bombastic. Big. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the thing is like I I can foresee because the the hammerhead fight at the end of the DLC right is a neat fight, but if you had to adapt that into a movie, it wouldn't be that much. Like it it would be him zipping around in the armor a bunch and Peter dodging and webbing it up. Right versus the Doc Ock fight at the end of the main game, which could be the climax of a movie. Yeah, based on the on the MCU, right? So I already see in that trilogy people being like, "We went from this to this," and like the the first one is the scene from the trailer of them all flying at each other, and the second one's him just like going for blows with Wilson Fisk. And I I think these the, the Disney Plus shows are I almost just like coughed and burped and hiccuped and like every exhale you could have possibly had. It was about to be really strange. Um like these shows are where they can really flesh out that street level stuff without needing to pass it through a movie check. Because yeah. one more time. You don't have you, you have the excuse of we don't have the budget to do a big bombastic fight and we don't want to because like 
Wilson Fisk is just a big guy who's really strong. <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing is either you can cool. lean into the you know, absurd comic booky thing. And like, that's the latest rumor to emerge is that instead of it just being, Oh, it's Vincent D'Onofrio. And since Vincent D'Onofrio is fucking huge. He works for Kingpin is that it, allegedly there's a mix of like practical and CGI effects to make him like rotund monstrosity Wilson Fisk who like low key has super strength. Um, which like, again, like if you want to, if you want to make it clear that MCU Daredevil isn't canon, but we're going to use Charlie Cox and Wilson Fisk allegedly for stuff. I like that direction of keep the actors change the look. Mm -hmm. So I, again, like I, I, I hear what you're saying. And I think that upping the ante, like having, if Spider-Man's going to throw down with Kingpin in the MCU in the, any time in the future, in the future, you make it so that Kingpin feasibly, and I know he does it in daredevil, but like could put someone through a wall. And I don't mean like hit them hard enough and like put a hole in the wall. I mean, lift them up and throw them through a wall. You know, like, is it unrealistic? Of course, all of this is, but give me giant rotund monstrosity, Wilson Fisk. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, ah, I'm really excited for where this show goes in the, in the future. This is this is really cool, and I'm liking what we're getting. And obviously, like as of this week, you know, like this will be going up today, the thirtieth. You know, tomorrow we're halfway done. You know, like that's the thing with these six episode shows is that it kind of sneaks up on you how short we get it. Uh, that's the perfect length. There's no filler, and they don't need to worry. Like they get to flesh out their whole story. They don't have to worry about having a movie ending and they get, they don't have to like slot in episodes of nonsense that are you like, especially with these shows would usually be fun, but they don't have time or the money for. Yeah. 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 Well, I, and I know you loved the bad batch, but like, I, I, I would really hate for as good as these shows have all consistently been for me to like hit like kind of a bad batch run where it's like three or four episodes in a row of just kind of nothing, mm -hmm. you know? And like, again, I don't mean to yak your yum, but like I did not enjoy those episodes of the bad batch for the most part. Um, but I, I don't want to see it fall into that trap. And like you said, that, that the run that we've had has been that perfect ground where you can the, the mcu it. stuff is has all been like just the perfect bite-sized stories that like they're they're mini series but they're you know the marvel once again defining what a mini series is now right like the, the definition keeps changing and how a season yeah. of television works keeps altering over the years like we went from the t classic 22 to Game of Thrones coming out, everyone was like, "Well, now we got to do 13. And Game of Thrones went, "Hey, 13, yeah." Game of Thrones went, "Hey, we're gonna do it in 10." Good God! And they're all gonna be two hours long. <laughs> yeah, like we're gonna make 10 movies and put them out, and everyone went, "That's stupid." Eight, <laughs> eight movies, and then Marvel, Marvel now doing the perfect. Six hours at whatever pace we want, and you will watch it every minute, and you'll theorize the entire time. It doesn't matter if it's actually the point or not, you're gonna keep guessing the entire time. It's genius, it's brilliant. They like they cracked the code wide open. It's ah. Uh... There's a part of me that gets frustrated. <laughs> like we're we're all trapped in this machine, but it's it works so well that I'm into it and I don't care. Uh but yeah. Like I said, halfway point, we'll be talking next week about Hawkeye. Uh 
by then I think Travis will believe me and check it out and we can have a yeah. conversation about uh half of the show at once. Um it'll be a good time. But until then, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Uh number one contender this week will be talking the last two matches of the singles tournament, and we'll be doing our spectacular prediction show. Which is crazy. We've made it to the end of the season, our first season with a Schmodown podcast, which uh, I'm excited for and proud for. I'm excited to do a uh, prediction cast <laughs> for the Schmodown Awards. Um, speaking of showdown or Schmodown, shout out again to uh, Around the Galaxy, Pete's uh, Star Wars talk show podcast. Travis, I don't know if you saw this or not. Uh, but his most recent guest in the episode that went up today is uh, John the Outlaw Roca. I did not. And yeah, I uh, once I finish up my regimented behind the bastards and it could happen here daily as I do on a Tuesday. Uh, oh yeah, what's that about this week? I, I didn't. Did they? Did you see an episode go up on Thursday? Because I kept checking no. bastards all weekend. There's an episode up to date that says Thursday, and I'm very confused. Uh, but it's about libertarian sea cities. But uh, uh, I uh, I don't see uh, unless it's in. Uh, is that it? Can happen here? BTB. BTB. Nope. I just see it can happen here weekly eleven. So. That's so weird because mine's saying Thursday part one, the not at all sad history of libertarian sea cities. Hmm. That's so odd. Um, I wonder if I like close out and then reopen Spotify, if it'll disappear, but either way, at some point today, I'm going to be listening to it. I highly recommend everybody else does. Uh, I'm super excited to see here. Uh, Pete sit down with Roca. Um, Obviously, this weekend will be Roka's last match, and I'm very, very emotional and excited about it. So stay tuned for all that. Again, Thursday, be there live to watch Spencer and I knock some sense into Jerry and Scotty, uh, show them who the non schmodown competing Star Wars trivia uh, wonks, the top dogs are. Uh Michael from All Remaining Systems is already picking the next fight, so I might have to do a little trivia fisticuffs with him next. Smack people around, submit an audition tape. Y'all know how it goes. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for all that. Sunday's Bloody Mary code TNAP. Travis, where can the lovely people find you? They can find me maybe tweeting out some more screenshots from Guardians. Uh, on Twitter and not that on Instagram, I don't have my Instagram tied to my PlayStation, but on Twitter and Instagram at Travis Political, and maybe, maybe, possibly, not at all a promise. Uh, maybe streaming again sometime soon. Um, because Pokemon's fun, and I want to stream it because it's fun and I like it. Uh, but also Christmas is coming, and that means I'm very busy this month. And I don't know if I'll have time to do it, but I want to do it. So we'll see. Once, once the world, once everybody's worlds calm back down in January, prime, prime real estate. Uh, but yeah, Jared. I, I have a vested interest. I also hope you start streaming again because I enjoy watching. Maybe do like a, because that's like. I enjoy doing Nuzlocks. I'm bad at them, but I like doing them. I love the Sinnoh games, but they're trash. <laughs> like, Diamond and Pearl objectively are very bad Pokemon games. Uh, but the Diamond and Pearl remakes are very fun and cool and don't take three years to complete because they are so slow. And so... Uh, I want to do a Nuzlocke of it, and I think it'd be fun to stream. So I don't want to start it till I'm streaming, but I also don't know when you I'm want to do a walk of it. You never heard of the Nuzlocke? No. 
I guess, yeah, because you don't really like. Okay, so basically, I guess if you're listening and watching, and you also haven't heard of one, this is for you too. It, it's like the the premier Pokemon challenge run. Okay. So the rules are: you have to nickname every Pokemon. I already do that, but you have to nickname every Pokemon you catch so you get attached. You only get to catch the first Pokemon you meet on each route. You can't catch any others. And if you if you don't catch it, <coughs> you don't get a Pokemon for that route. And if a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead, and you have to release it. Oh, and no legendaries. Which made Sinnoh Nuzlocke even harder. First of all, Platinum, hardest Pokemon game ever made, really. Uh, two... Diamond and Pearl have are the worst about HMs, the like okay, the world locking moves because uh-huh. there's eight of them and you need all eight to complete the game. Meaning you need two Pokemon's worth of HMs just to finish the game, and so there is like no feasible way to do that. I mean, there is, uh huh, and then if you're Cheat, you know, I, I say cheating, but it's not really like you. Most people don't actually release their Pokemon, they just keep a box labeled graveyard or dead or whatever, and they throw it in there. Um, and then when they get to the end of the game and they're like, Wow, I don't have anything that can learn surf or strength or rock climb, you know, all things I need to complete the game or waterfall, uh, they grab one of the dead Pokemon, teach it to that, they get to where they need to go, and they put it back in the dead box. Um, you don't need to use HMs. In or you do, but they're not actually HMs in the remakes. They're just like, I will now be surfing. Thank you. <laughs> I will now scale this waterfall. Thank you. You don't have a you need a Pokemon that knows it, which means you can't soft lock yourself super early, which is nice. Interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, I would like. I would very much enjoy watching that happen. Um, but yeah. Uh, you guys find me Twitter, Instagram, Dark Jedi 2552. Uh, Scotty J Row is a bitch. Um, you can find the Nerd Academy on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com. Where, if you're feeling generous and you'd like to donate to our Patreon page, uh, you can do that. Give me a dollar. Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our ten dollar alumnus, Case of Brie on the Waffle Wizard Delta 9, Zach Canals. Uh, Nick Johnston and Omari Oshindeu, or I, am I right? Did I say it right? Did I fuck it up? You missed a couple letters, but it's fine. Okay, I, I, you like Paco, misplaced a couple letters. Paco like really gave me a break and just this said did some normal shit, and then he he hit me with hey. Japanese now. I can't okay, I gotta like verify the Patreon again. It's making me do the two-step verification. Uh, because it does that every so often. It was me. I wanted to pull it up to make sure I had the list right. <sighs> oh, another thing. Versus series. Uh final technical versus matchup for the five dollar tier is happening. Probably next week is when Lord Hoth versus Darth Vader will be coming out. After that, we're doing the Versus Series tournament again. Spencer, Joel, and probably Travis as well, because I value your opinion with what to do with Patreon stuff, uh, are going to figure out how we're going to do the Versus Series bracket competition again. Basically how it works, we do the Versus Series tournament. We'll have all the winners of their individual matchups throughout the year on one side, the losers on the other, and then everything will culminate in the winningest winner and the winningest loser from their thing. And if you can predict how Spencer and I will kind of land on each matchup, you'll win free merch. We might do it for people who aren't patrons as well. If we do a non-patron prize, you that that person will win less than the patron winner. Will be the plan. Uh, but again, that is all TBD. By the time we do Lord Hoth versus Darth Vader, 
we will have an answer on that. And then we will do announcements for the stream itself. We will be doing a live stream of the versus tournament. So stay tuned for all of that. So yeah, uh, I can just, if Travis can still hear me, I'm going to just bump you buddy. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for all that. Again, $5 tier stuff on the Patreon, $10 tier. Uh, thank you to our patrons who support us there. Uh, T Public Student Store, it's December. So everything's basically going to be on sale all month. So go help yourself to some TNAP merch uh, while you can. Get it for your friends. Get it for your friends who listen to the show. Or don't and get them random merch and then they'll start listening to the show. Who knows? Well, thank you all so very much for listening. Uh, oh, feedback. Uh, you'd think sending me a text was enough. You'd think so, like they'd have one way, and I get why they don't. Uh, like confirming appointments stuff, or like we sent you a text, we sent you an email, we're calling you now. I get it. I scheduled the appointment. I know when my appointment is. Thank, like, thank you for the text to remind me. I appreciate that. I did kind of. I was fuzzy on the time of my appointment. I made it a month ago. Uh, but thank you. I don't need you to call me just to press one. Have the confirmation in the text. Any results. Out of curiosity, don't answer this question if you don't want to. Does this have anything to do with your myriad head trauma? Uh, no. No? It's about uh, probably the damage I did to my skin as a youngster. Uh, <laughs> it's a even when better I went, when i went to the doctor whatever two months ago now um he was like hey you've never had blood work done you should go do, do that you stupid adult and then um it was like also um go to a dermatologist and get checked out and i was like okay sure because <laughs> i didn't wear sunscreen as a kid like an idiot it's okay. I definitely need to do all that stuff as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, however you engage with the show. Uh, excited for our end of the year content. Hopefully we'll be able to sneak in like before 2021 ends a like ranking of the movies. Cause it's been a while since we did that. And we actually had movies to rank this year. I said, we couldn't really do that in 2020, but we really wasn't an option, but, uh, I think we'll be able to do that this year and it'll be, it'll be nice. Cause it'll probably be like the final word for us spoken on the Snyder cut. <laughs> Don't say that. Like, like it'll, like it'll be our like final moment to be like, here's how I feel. It's been almost, it's been like most of the year since I've last seen it and thought about it. Final ranking. And we're going to put it in a box and bury it and then put it in the ocean. Uh, but yeah, hopefully all that comes to fruition, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, class. Where's my cursor dismissed. Stop. Move away from the cookie jar.